Hello and welcome to a special edition of the In the Money Players podcast. This is our Japan Cup roundtable show for 2022. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker. Once again, I should have planned better. I should be wearing a Japanese whiskey shirt. Apologies on that, but small fail. But I'm sure we'll make up for it over the course of this show. We have established an esteemed panel. We'll start with intros, and we'll begin with the man in the, the, the Hollywood square below me, a very much of a regular on the network the last couple of years. Man, I'm looking forward to uh, hanging out with in Tucson in a couple of weeks. You know him from the great work he does up at Woodbine and specifically on the JRA stuff with us. He is Klaus Ebner. Klaus, what's going on? Good evening, Pete. How's it going? Things are good, man. Glad to be doing the show with you and this uh, panel of guests, starting with another man that I met actually in Tucson last year. And he's the uh, he's the emissary from the, the home country for the JRA. He's a man who has uh, made it his mission to help explain Japanese racing to folks from around the world. He is Toshi Onokubo. Toshi, what's going on? Hi, Peter. Brilliant to be here. Thanks. And beneath Toshi, you see a man whose work you've read over at the TDN, been very happy to have, have him be part of the extended In the Money family through his uh, passion for Japanese racing and the work he does with Klaus and the team, Alan Carrasso. Alan, what's up? Hey, Pete, how are you? Thanks for having me. And in the upper right corner, as I look at my screen, a guy we haven't had on, and it, it's been too long since we've had him on. He's done a fantastic job on uh, the network, as he does uh, covering Harness racing, covering the JRA, Robert Reed Jr. Always a pleasure to be here. Listen, I'm in over my head uh, with this <laughs> panel for Japan uh, racing. So just going to put that out there right now, but I'll try to hold my own. And last but certainly not least, a woman I know from her passion for racing, mostly through social media, get a chance now to work with her for the first time and very uh, excited. She's already helped me uh, to, to, with the, on the technical side, uh, troubleshooting my limited knowledge and how to, square, how to share screens on StreamYard. She's Alex Henry. Alex, what's up? Hey, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Let's start off with a, a historical question, and I'm going to bring in Toshi for this one. Just for folks that don't know the significance of the Japan Cup, how big of a deal is this race? How far back does it go, Toshi? Uh, it's very big, of course, Pete. You know, you know the fast, fast international racing in Japan and in the history. And actually, the international you know, participant has been decreased recent years. But, you know, as you might be aware, you know, JRA built new quarantine facility at the Tokyo Racecourse on site. You know, previously you must uh, quarantine at the JRA horse racing school before yep. you going to the racetrack. So quite a few, you know, uh, complained about uh, from the contenders and connections and, you know, exercise being li limited for the horses before the grade one race. But, you know, it's improved. And this year we got four international runners, you know, three from France and one from Germany. You know, as you know, that's it's been dominated by Japanese horses. You know, last international runner won the Japan Cup was back in 2005, you know, Al Cassette. And we just praised year after in 2006. And that was the last international contender to be in fast three in the Japan Cup. But interesting, you know, stats would be, I want to bring is that six times out of 10, you know, last Japan Cups are won by international jockeys. And this year we got nine out of 18 actually ridden by, you know, jockeys coming from outside of Japan, you know, including Christopher Romero as a, you know, regular rider in Japan. But it is still there, you know, with the international jockeys, we got the, you know, international aspect of the competition. So, and we got four international runners. Very exciting race this year, Pete. It's very cool. I, I will ask another uh, general question or two before we get into the specifics of this year's Japan Cup. And Alex, I'm going to come back to you for this one. I'm just curious, you know, I feel like when we've had the other folks on the panel uh, on the first time they've explained their connections to Japanese racing, how they became a fan, I'll throw that one in your direction. How did you how did you get so into the, the JRA that you're willing to stay up late night here in America and watch week in, week out? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so I have was actually a huge, I, I was became a fan of racing for my grandfather. Um, he when DRC was open in Detroit. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Um, we used to go. I was really little, um, and just 
progress from there. And being a nerd, I love playing video games. And as I know Toshi might know, the best video game to play for horse racing fans is Winning Post. It's a Japanese language only game. And Gallop Racer actually has many more games in Jap Japanese. So I taught myself katakana and just immersed myself in these games and just started diving into Japanese racing. And now that I'm adult and can decorate my house, I have tokens from from Klaus very kindly sending me things and I just I love it it's um it's truly um to see the fans to the engagement um from Japanese fans um, at the track live uh, it's like no other so I hope to visit someday <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's my favorite horse racing origin story that, that I've ever heard fan wise because it combines the traditional trope of the older relative who who shows you the ropes with this amazing uh, you know very postmodern idea and it reminds me a story of uh well, I worked on a book uh, many years ago with uh, with Chris Jericho, the wrestler, and he had described to me a person that he met in Japan who was like a super fan of wrestling who learned English so he could speak to the, the wrestlers. And this is sort of, you know, the, the, that that story in reverse. So I, I like uh, I love uh, bringing that in here, Alex. Thank you for that uh, for that uh, tidbit. Alan, I'll bring you in for a breeding question specifically, as we've seen the, the just the, 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 the bloodlines in Japan just getting stronger and stronger over the years. And we see the Japanese so active at the sale, so many top American broodmares now going over to Japan. What, what are your predictions for the next few years in terms of the bloodstock market and just how strong we see Japanese racing? And, you know, was was. Have, have these last couple of years been an anomaly or do we expect to continue to see Japanese runners do so well when they go around the globe? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, um, it's going to be the norm and, st and not the exception. And, you know, if, if the, the current plummeting of the yen versus the dollar, if that did not stop the Yoshida's and KI farms of the world from buying seven figure mares at, at Keeneland, nothing will. So, I mean, the, the fascinating thing is just how they've taken our our mares bred for the dirt, uh, take Dubai Majesty, for for example, and, and made them these brilliant grade one, group one turf producers. It, it's fascinating. Um, and, and whether it's Deep Impact or Lord Canlore or King Kamehameha, it's just um, they just seem to have the magic potion. So we'll we'll see what happens in the intervening years, but it's been a storyline I've been I've been following, and I I think is fascinating, and and I, it's it's interesting to see like uh, Coolmore and the interest that they have in in some of these Japanese bloodlines going forward. You know, it it's uh, I think it's a story that will if the if the if what's been happening at the sales doesn't doesn't change for financial reasons i still think there's going to be a lot happening um in terms of the the impact on the world bloodstock market that that has uh japanese uh, elements to it robert you joked before that you you know you felt like you were out of depth on this panel i you know we've heard you talking about japanese racing we know you as a passionate racing fan and, and somebody who has a, a really good perspective on this on this product what is it that you like the most about studying the form of the Japanese races and, and participating in the JRA coverage. Uh, to be honest, it started off as a challenge for me, right? Because I'm, I'm a harness racing guy first. And then obviously North American thoroughbreds. One thing people don't know about me is I love Australian thoroughbreds as well. And I think that's when Klaus kind of came to me and said, he wanted me to approach it from someone who wasn't familiar a couple of years ago. Anyways, uh, you know, wasn't familiar with the Japanese um, racing product and, and kind of start from the, the ground up and, and see if I could, uh, you know, be positive and ROI and, and profitable and wagering. So it, for me, I, I love the, um, the, first of all, the pageantry of, of the, uh, of the Japanese racing product. And, uh, well, I've also come to love, uh, a, uh, a filly by the name of Sodashi. I mean, everyone loves her. That certainly drew me in even more. And Christophe Lemaire, I'm the president of his fan club. So it's, uh, <laughs> It's really been uh, a lot of fun over the last couple of years and, and been able to finally, you know, start making some money this year as well, playing in the North American pools. They might be a little bit smaller than what obviously well, a lot smaller than they have in Japan, but there's a lot of opportunities for value. And that's where I approach it from, right, is that, um, you know, I've been someone who's been gambling 
since a long time before I should be gambling, Pete. So, um, you know, I look for value. Uh, I, I try to, um, you know, construct tickets that will uh, be profitable. And, and it's worked out so far this season uh, for me in Japan. And I just hope that uh, trend continues. We're not going to do much on the undercard, but class, I know you did have some interest in some of the two-year-old racing. Maybe we'll actually go there before we get to the, the big one. Just for a, a quick thought on, if not horses to bet, at least some some pedigrees or, or horses to look out for uh, in the big run-up to the big race. Yeah, so just uh, they have released the card. I think it was this this morning, at least for us here in North America. But uh, some interesting, uh, interesting two-year-olds on the undercard, uh, you know, the one thing I can say, and I, I know that uh, Alex can vouch, vouch for this, is that um, the Japanese, when in terms of naming some of the horses, you kind of have to wonder sometimes how they got past the uh, the regulators sometimes. Because uh, I know, cause I, know so, I know we had before uh, Love is Bouchette uh, yep. in, in the past. Uh, well, guess what? There's a, there's a horse by uh, the the brilliant mare Egg Drop out of Just Away uh, in the third race, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend anybody here, but uh, again, I don't know how this happened, but it's a two-year-old colt who's who's called Egg Slut. So um, it's a restaurant chain. Here. It's a it's a successful restaurant chain in uh, Los Angeles and Las the, Vegas. So well, there I, we go. I, okay, all right. So so that one kind of threw me for a loop. But uh, the one I was looking for, and, and it's interesting, you know, how we talked about dirt pedigrees and how they kind of uh, are are uh, kind of amel uh, emerged or amalgamated into Japanese pedigrees. Well, we also have. Uh, champagne rooms for I think they're either her first or second full. I'm not sure, Alan, if you know that this is her first or second full. But um, Epluchage is is one in here. Damian Lane's running for uh, riding for Sunday racing, and that's a uh, Justify uh, Colt out of Champagne Rooms. So that one there is uh, looks pretty impressive. Um, and then also, uh, if you look in race five quickly, there's also a, a horse out of a uh, out of Harp Star uh, who's called Lyra Star. So. Uh, those of you that don't know, Harp Star was a uh, was a brilliant three-year-old filly, and also, um, you know, showed, strutted her stuff as a three-year-old filly in Japan. Uh, and this is one by Lord Canaloa. So we, we talked about that kind of all-star pedigree, and that's one here in the form of uh, Lyra Star in the uh, in the fifth race. So um, those are a few I was looking at in there. Uh, there's also one in the in the sixth race. Sorry, not to, not to go on forever here, but. Uh, one who's kind of closely related to uh, to Liz Grassiou, who is a uh, winner of the Tiger Zucanon, also had some wins in Australia. Uh, and this one here kind of is a three-quarter sister out of Epiphania uh, called La Reine des Lys. So uh, interesting. We'll see, we'll see what happens with some of those uh, very well bred two-year-olds. A lot, of, uh, a lot of very cool angles. I was a big Champagne Room fan, the big uh, upset winner at the Breeders' Cup. It was at Juvenile Phillies several years ago now. But uh, uh, just another good example, as you said, of the, the, the cross-pollination that we see. So we do have PPs available for the big race. I'm going to uh, share a screen and show folks what they look like. Plus, I will come right back to you just to tell people where they can get these PPs if they're unfamiliar with the, with the JRA uh, product. Certainly. So, so these are kind of the uh, the initial PPs, very very rudimentary, uh, that the JRA will provide via the JapanRacing.jp site. Uh, they do have a kind of micro site available for the Japan Cup, so uh, you can check that site out. They'll have a lot of information, a lot of stats, a lot of analysis for the Japan Cup. Um, but most importantly, I can say is that you know we as the you know Japan JRA team slash in the money team will have the actual. Uh, English PPs loaded up on the In The Money site uh, as early as we can uh, tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, uh, so that customers can, can start doing that deep dive into the card. As ever, and also extra analysis and picks over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com that can be that can be checked out as well. So yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be cycling those in and out of the screen as we go. Let's get to the big race, and we'll bring it back to Toshi for for his thought. Uh, at, at first, I, I don't know how far along you are in your process if you're ready to commit to a final answer, Toshi. But I'll ask the question more generally: Who are some of the runners you think are the most interesting in this year's Japan Cup? Yeah, Pete. I mean, surely this is a very open field this year. You know, we got you know not you know as strong as uh, you know other years this year. I have to admit that. And, you know, we got five individual grade one winners. And as I mentioned, then four international contenders, three of them are grade one winners. Yeah, interesting one would be, you know, Shafria, of course, the Derby winner from last year. And Daring Tuck, the triple tiara winner 
they changed the you know the jockey uh, from Matsuyama to Tom Marquand, uh, the one of the best jockeys in UK and perhaps in the world. So that's you know very you know strong decision made by their connection. That's very interesting. And the other horse from the international runners, what I would mention is Grand Glory. She finished fifth last year and she came back this year and she's been sold as a broodmare to the Yoshi, one of Yoshida's, you know, Shadai farm. So that's kind of, you know, interesting uh, runners. And yeah, my pick is actually none, none of them. And number 14, Danon Beruga, the three years old, right three days, grade three winner, run well, both in Guineas and Derby, uh, Satsuki Show and Tokyo Yushin. Uh, last time out, he finished in third in Tenno Show uh, behind Equinox. Looks very, very strong horse and Pantharasa. And two of them finished ahead of him in the Tenno Show is not in this field. So it would be the biggest chance for him to become a grade one winner, I believe. Robert, let's bring you back in. You mentioned the, the study you're doing and the, the, the ROI experiments. Is there... Uh, an angle in particular, maybe a horse you think could be particular value in the in the USA pools that we're going to have here, or, or are you just approaching this like you would any other race and uh, trying to find the winner who's going to be acceptable value and go from there? Well, I, I do have a horse that I'm hoping will be value, but I think we've already seen the price shorten up in some fixed odds uh, market, and it's um it's a uh, Tunis who's a, a, a German horse. I want to ask Klaus's opinion. Actually, I haven't spoke to Klaus about this yet. I do actually want to know if he was conflicted. Uh, when Japan came back to beat Germany, because <laughs> I know that would it would have been a tough one for him, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, th th just to speak on that quickly, I, I thought I, I knew you'd be going to ask me. So I am wearing a, a Japan uh, soccer jersey right now, Ooh. and that's uh, because I, I lost a, I lost a bet with my friend in, okay. in Japan. So, uh, so we <laughs> but you're had still a, proudly uh, we had, wearing it. I, I'm still very proudly wearing yeah. it. I, I do have very many uh, Japan. Uh, soccer jersey so this is one of the one of the ones i grabbed but uh i did tell him that you know if if uh if germany beat japan that he'd have to wear a, a germany jersey around tokyo and uh <laughs> if, if i if i lost then i would be wearing this around uh toronto so not as bad for me but uh, it would have been horrible for him to obviously have to wear a yeah the stakes are not exactly the same in that yeah. uh in that, in that particular no in that particular wager yeah. tunis is an interesting runner i mean and yeah. this was a great story uh, class that you sent around to to me and Alan. It was like something. It would be it would be the opening scene in a movie. A horse that was purchased by accident. Alan, did you did you have a chance to read that read through that story? Were you aware of yeah, it already? I, I was. We uh, we actually had a story in our paper as well from Emma Berry, our European editor. But yeah, it's a it's a great story and the and the relation to uh, to Torquato Tasso and all that stuff. I mean, but you know, by a sire. Uh, whose first name is apparently Rudy. I don't know, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, <laughs> out of America called Tijuana. So, yeah, but, and it would be a great story. Listen, German Group 1 form has proven to be very strong over the last few years. You look at Alpinista, who won in Germany several times before winning the ARC this year. So, um, so German form is probably better and stronger than it looks on paper. I, I certainly can't rule him out. Yeah, Look no but, further than Rebels Romance for an example of that. Robert, what was it that attracted you to Tunis? It, it was exactly that, is that, you know, in everything I've read about this horse um, and everything I've seen, uh, he really, again, as long as he takes to the to the ground, which is a lot of the cases with uh, European uh, horses racing in this race, he should be competitive with this group. I mean, the, the trainers high on him. All, trainers are always high on their horses. I get that. But everything he said about um, his workouts uh, uh, over uh, in, in Japan right now has been positive. Uh, he's got a jockey. Uh, he's actually from Ka uh, Kazakhstan, who's a champion rider uh, in Germany. Uh, but but really everything. The, the knock that I see is is exactly what was just mentioned is that a lot of people don't think that German form holds up in these spots, but I think it actually can uh, and will if he does uh, just take to the surface. And when I looked at the um, the market right now and what projected odds will be, I think him at around 16 to 20 to one, again, hoping that we get that uh, is a lot more attractive than many of the other horses in the race. I, I do lean to Vela Azul as as probably a top choice. But again, from a value perspective, it's Tunis for me. And uh, I think this might be the year that the Europeans get back in the win column. 
Yeah, Toshi mentioned the recent hoodoo as far as that goes, but Robert bucking the trend. Alex, let's bring you back in for your thought on the big one. Who's going to get the money? <laughs> well, I do like Bella Azul. I know Ryan Moore um, will take them out, and he's hungry for a win. Uh, um, did some research, and it seems like he hasn't he hasn't won Japan Cup since 2013 on Gentle Donna, so I'm sure he'd like to uh, get a win in this decade. But um, I actually looked for a, an outside horse, um, number 18, uh, Baccherini, a uh, six-year-old horse. He's been really consistent all year. Excuse me, I'm fighting a cold. <laughs> Excuse my raspy voice, but uh, been very consistent. He's been no worse than third this year. Um, he won the grade to uh, Maguro Kanen over uh, firm ground, and it's looking likely they'll get firm ground tomorrow. I don't know if things have changed, um, but he, he's really been consistent and finished second to Vela Azul. Um, in the grade two uh, Kyoto Daisho 10. So I, I think that this one could be sneaky under the radar and definitely would get a price. Alan, you mentioned you consider Tunis a contender, but I'm sensing that you have somebody else who you'd make your top pick at this stage. Where, where are you looking to go? So I, I actually thought that um, Shariar's prep run, some people are knocking it that he was fractionally disappointing. And he's, you know, he's been sparingly campaigned. I was in Dubai for the, for the, for World Cup night and, uh, obviously, Japan uh, dominated uh, the entire program, but you know he ran a cracking race there. You can forgive the the Prince of Wales stakes; he just didn't take the Ascot. And then coming back off a lengthy layoff, I thought he ran fine in the Tenno Show, which was obviously a, a, a race that was run very peculiarly, with the Pantalosa breaking off by fifteen uh, with three furlongs to race. And uh, you know, Equinox did a fantastic job to to reel him in. Uh, Dan Ambaluga ran ran well close off very, very quickly, a sub-33 for the final three furlongs. But I thought Chariar was something like 33 and uh, 33.6 home um, over a distance, I think, is short of his best. So I I, I would give him a, a, the best chance of the locals. I'm actually going to go with Onesto. I, th I think his form is – his European form is extremely consistent. Um <clears throat> He ran a terrific race in the Grand Prix, Grand Prix de Paris, which incidentally, if he were to double up the Japan Cup on top of the Grand Prix de Paris, he's in line for a $3 million bonus as one of the quali qualifying races for the Japan Cup. So uh, there's a little extra incentive for him to win. But uh, I thought his race in Leopardstown was great. Um, he, he was just outgamed by Luxembourg. A uh, horse who who brought it and came all together on the on the day for Luxembourg, and you know he finished tenth in the arc. He probably should have finished sixteenth. Um, he hated that ground. Just looking at him bogged down there. It, you know if you could even make him out with the with the dirt covered silk. So, uh, you know the fast ground is is what he's after. I think the twenty four hundred suits, and he you know he was the sixth favorite. I think when I last checked around 11 to one on the Japanese tote. Uh, anything around that would be fair value for me. Makes sense. And you make a compelling case for him and for Sharyar. What kind of price are we seeing on Sharyar at the moment? He was, I think, third joint, third choice around five to one when I lost, okay. when I lost so, on. So I can see wanting to reach for Ernesto at what will presumably be a bigger price. Klaus, let's bring you back in for, for your pick in this year's Japan Cup. Uh, so I think, you know, I, I had different opinions, uh, before and then after the, the, the draw. So, uh, interesting stats, just so everyone's aware is, is again, not that they mean anything nowadays, but, uh, in the past five years for the Japan cup gates nine through 18, uh, horses that have started out of gates nine through 18 have not finished in the first two, uh, in the past five years. So, uh, again, it's one of those weird anomalies that it could be, uh, important. It could be nothing, you know, um, uh, as Toshi mentioned, I was also on the uh, on the Dan and Beluga bandwagon for a while there, but once I saw he drew the outside as well as Shariar, so those are the two I was looking at. Uh, and then once the the draw happened, I was like, I don't know if I want them that far out in the race. So um, I'm going to a horse on the inside. He's kind of had a, a spotty career in the form of uh, Welt Reisende, so that actually translates to globe trotting in English. In in, uh, in English, so uh, Alan and I speak German all the time, so that's what uh, you know we can. They have a lot of German name horses in in Japan too, so it's interesting to see all the time the uh, the German name horses. But anyways, I, I landed on uh, Velrezenda. Um, he didn't have a great race last time out in the uh, Sanke Show. 
uh, finishing seventh in there behind Geraldine, who came back to win the uh, Kiwi, the, the Queen Elizabeth uh, Cup last week. Um, prior to that, though, he was he did beat her uh, in the uh, Naruto Keenan uh, at Chukyo. So, you know, he's, he's had a, a spotty career, lots of injuries. You know, in his three-year-old campaign, I thought he's one of the be better three-year-olds. He did finish third to uh, Contrail in the Japan uh, Japan Derby. So um, he's got a great trainer in the form of uh, Yatsutoshi Ike. And then, uh, you know, I, I just think the post still have near towards the inside. Um, you know, he's going to sit fourth, fifth, sixth and behind horses and, and see if he's good enough. But, you know, to everyone else's point, I just think it'll be a bit of a price. And, and again, will be one of the locals trying to beat uh, the, the European imports. Tell folks where the best places they can watch the race, Klaus. We, we mentioned there's going to be extra coverage over on InTheMoneyPodcast.com. Obviously, various ADW outfits will be covering it. Is, is that is that really the best answer, or is, is there? Yeah, is there it, it is, Pete. So, you know, obviously, there, there may be some options on, on YouTube that I can't uh, subscribe to. But uh, for the most part, yeah, you're, you're watching it through your, your ADW platform will be your best bet. Uh, you know, FanDuel, TVG, whatever you want to call it, we'll have it on there. Uh, we'll have it live on their TV network. Uh, but then outside of that, yeah, through your through your ADW platforms to to watch the stream of it. And the scheduled post time. What's the, when's the first race, and what's the scheduled post time for the big one? You're uh, you're putting me on the on the on the on the hook here, Pete. But, uh, <laughs> Somebody have it there. Yeah, yeah. Um, one. I'm pretty sure it's 140 for the for the big race. 140, 140 Eastern. Eastern huh? right. but not too yep. bad, and, and pretty easy in the West Coast, uh, honestly. And obviously, the card will start a number of of hours before that. Again, you can check back on InTheMoneyPodcast.com for uh, notes and selections and analysis from the team. But for the whole big night, it's one you know it's worth uh, it's worth staying up for. And and we hope folks will join in. And hey, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, let, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, you tell us. Uh, Tell us your winner for this year's Japan Cup. We'd love to get your thoughts and analysis as well. It's always fun to get to, to root, to, for, to, to get to, you know, uh, see what the audience thinks and, and interact a little bit. So, so please feel free to do that. And for, uh, for bonus credit, tell us where you're, uh, where, where you're watching from. It's always fun to see the global reach of, uh, of the stuff we do over here at In The Money. We're not done yet, though. I did want to ask one final question of each of the panelists. We're getting near the end of the year. How about a seasonal highlight, something that, uh, something that really will stick with you from uh, JRA Racing that happened in 2022? Toshi, we'll go back to you for, for a seasonal highlight for, the, for 2022. Yeah, for racing... Yeah, I was uh, at the Tokyo for the derby, uh, Tokyo Yushin, and Yutaka Take is the resident jockey in Japan, you know, won his sixth uh, derby. That was brilliant. And yeah, I'd like to ask this Aaron as well, but breeding side, you know, we lost Deep Impact uh, a few years ago, but still he is the top of the leading, you know, sire table. And, you know, the currently we have Epiphania who's standing for about, you know, 130,000 130, in US dollar. And he, unfortunately, you know, he didn't have any grade one winner this year. He only got grade two winner. That's only graded stakes winner for him this year. You know, who's the next champion sire in Japan? Of course, the Triple Crown winner, Contrary, is waiting. You know, his progeny is to run, you know, hit the track uh, in the Shadai Stallion. But, you know, what kind of, you know, sort Aran has or, you know, other, you know, uh, you know, other people would have uh, in this uh, in this table. So that's interesting. Uh, thing for me, yeah. In the it's, great. it's a great question, and we'll bring we'll go out of order. We'll bring Alan in for that, but yeah, Take. I remember the summer many moons ago, he rode at Del Mar and uh, seeing the flashes of talent. And it's been amazing to see how his career has developed. That's definitely a good one in terms of a, of a, of a seasonal highlight. Alan, what of uh, Toshi's question about the next big sire in Japan? Who, who's ready to, to, to fill those shoes? Well, Toshi, you've put me on the spot now. I'm going to have to cheat here a little bit. <laughs> if anybody so, has a thought, you guys all follow. If anybody has a thought, uh, feel free to feel free to chime in and make it more of a conversation as well. I would say Lord I mean, Canaloa for me. You're right. Lord mm -hmm. He has down right. Scorpion this year. Um, he won a grade one mile race. Uh, I think NHK mile, right? Four three-year-olds. Down Scorpion won, yep. And yes. he's had a number of excellent winners like almond eye saturnalia pantalasa um so 
that's for me. Definitely, definitely making uh, definitely making significant marks with the, with that kind of with that kind of progeny for sure. Alex, we'll keep it with you for your seasonal highlight next. Uh, I think for me, it has to be Surashi uh, winning the Grade One Victoria Mile. Um, a huge fan of hers, and it was just so enthralling at like two forty at night <laughs> seeing her. <laughs> cast my screen so that's it for me <laughs> that's awesome my daughter's favorite racehorse my da daddy is that a unicorn this was an actual conversation we had when i showed her the tape and uh, that would put that I, i'd probably uh row in with you on that particular opinion alan how about you highlight wise for the for the year yeah i mean uh just the japanese dominance overseas the four in saudi five in dubai yeah. and you know in, in four weeks time there could be more uh you know, uh, white flag and, and red circle success in, in Hong Kong. They sent, uh, they're going to send a team of 14 over there. But I think on the JRA itself, I'm a giant fan of and track U.S. spreads and their performances over there. Uh, Jean Darm is actually headed to Hong Kong. He won the uh, the sprinter stakes and something of an upset uh, last month. And then um, a five-year-old point of entry mare I follow called Lotus Land. Uh, she just ran actually in the mile championship, but she uh, she came very close to winning the uh, the Takamatsuno Niyakin in uh, in, uh, in March with a strong stinging late run. So I just you know I enjoy following the justifies and gun runners over there, and um, it's always fun for me to see how how well the U.S. spreads perform. Yeah, as an industry person, it's, it's a, that that's cross pollination that we talked about. It's just it's just so fascinating. If you have any kind of interest in in that side of the game at all, Japan's a place you almost have to be paying attention to these days. Robert, you're up next for your uh, 2022 highlight. Well, I mean, we've already you know, heard world dominance, which I mean, listen, you know, Klaus, like, like I said, he got me into uh, J Japan racing a couple of years ago. It was a good time, right, to get yeah, involved because you're able to cash a lot of tickets uh, uh, overseas as well. Um, you know, Sodashi, you know, Alex said that one, so I'll, I'll go somewhere else. And it was just a race that I found incredibly exciting, probably because I needed the horse to get there, and he did. Equinox winning the Tenno show, uh, looked impossible, you know. What I mean, it was it was a race that, um, you know, I thought there was no hope at the head of the stretch. Um, and then my man Christophe Lemaire got there just in the nick of time, um, and it was just uh, an incredible performance and, and a real fun race to watch. And I find that. Uh, about that product you know like you know i tell a lot of people to stay up late tune in and, and they watch it and they're always uh finding it to be a, a really exciting style of racing and the jockey colony is one that i love i, I tell people too if you just bet connections and, and lean on the top jocks you'll probably do pretty well uh and wagering on japanese uh racing so i i think that the jockey colony and and, and watching those guys do battle uh every time uh, they go on the track is something that's really fun for me Love it. Klaus, how about your highlight? Yeah, um, I think Alan, Alan stole it for me there, but uh, that's all good. Uh, it's really just uh, the performance of the, the Japanese horse on the world stage. Uh, I, I know we're all still hoping for that uh, eventual uh, arc victory for Japan, and uh, we'll get there. Right? We'll get there. We'll get there one year. Uh, I really thought there was, this would be this may have been the year with title holder, but uh, again, the uh, the ground just really that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think Toshi, we're gonna have to talk to the Japanese breeders about uh, buying some uh, some long-winded mares that enjoy soft ground to uh, to breed to. So, uh, anyways, yeah, that's just uh, for for me again. It's just their dominance uh, outside of Japan, and and just you know, again, it, it just puts a smile on my face when I can get a uh, horse at at twenty-five to one that I know is uh, a world-class horse and uh, goes ahead and wins a uh, wins a race overseas. That's uh, you know, you kind of looking at saying, why is this horse? so long I, I i remember for sure uh alan and i were actually talking on uh on uh, on twitter uh messaging each other quickly when the race is going on and uh, i think in, in the b pools for instance uh, here in north america um Panthalassa was like 12 to 1 and i was like okay i'll take that any day of the week so uh it's just those kind of those kind of day the events are just really you know not, i'm not only cheering for japanese horses but also getting to uh Cash and a few tickets never hurts. So well, that's that's certainly a big thing for our audience, and and it's Breeders Cup like, right? When you've got these big international races and so many competitors, you end up with great looking paper on twelve and fifteen and twenty to one shots, and we've seen that from the Japanese contingent around the world. I'm looking forward to seeing what Japan does at next year's Breeders Cup, assuming with the West Coast 
locale for the Breeders' Cup again. We'll see much more Japanese uh, competition than we did this year at Keeneland. And I'll just close it off by saying, Klaus, brilliant idea. When you first told me, well, what if we have six people? And I'm like, six people, that's kind of a lot. I had a <laughs> blast. What a great what a great thing it is to have so many different perspectives. And I think we're going to have to do this again. And, and maybe, you know, maybe at the beginning of the season, we could do something a little bit more evergreen um, to set people up for the JRA season or something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll do that production meeting outside the context of the show. But this is just my way of saying to everybody on the panel how much fun I had and how much uh, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed everything, guys. We'll, we'll, we'll do it again soon. Yeah, and thanks, Pete. Uh, I got to say, though, because as, as, as good as this Japan Cup field is, uh, the way the Arima Keenan shaping up, which is like the year end championship, the way that feels shaping up this year for, uh, for, uh, it'll be Christmas Eve for us here in, uh, in North America, but, um, that, that feels looking pretty impressive right now in terms of all the horses aiming for that race, uh, in, in, on, on December 24th. So, uh, Japan Cup's a fantastic race, an important race, but, uh, if you can, you know, stay awake for that, uh, Arima Keenan Ke Ke race. That's going to be an amazing race in terms of who's uh, who's showing up for that race. So we'll stay, we'll stay up, we'll watch, we'll 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 clock Santa Claus, we'll have some <laughs> cookies and whiskey. I'm, I'm looking forward to it already, and we're going to have coverage of it here on uh, the In the Money Media Network as well, so folks can check back there. We are out of time, so I will just thank all the guests one more time. Thank everybody out there for supporting our YouTube channel, for uh, subscribing to us wherever you get your podcast. We really appreciate the support of the viewers and the listeners. They, as I say at the end of every show, the, you're, you're the, what, the reason this is so fun to do. This show's been a production of In The Money Media. Our business manager is Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge champion, Drew Coatney. Our chief creative officer is Jonathan Kinchin. I'm Peter Thomas Fornital. May you win all your Japan Cup night photos.